Hello and welcome back. We will be continuing on with our text editor and our browser. Again, I have my console up if you ever need to check for errors. So in this example, we are going to look at um, using if statements, else if statements, and else statements. So up to this point, our flow of control was start with line one and then just do every line as they came, just like we read from left to right, top to bottom. So there's been no way to repeat code, which we'll see in the next video, and there's been no way to skip over code we don't want to. So now we can actually use an if statement to say, well, only do this code in certain situations. Uh, for this video, we'll be using a number, so we can use something like age to do this. So we can still ask them their name, so we can keep all this stuff um, up to age. And you can still... As we get into this, I'm going to show you also, you can comment things out. So instead of deleting it, you can use a comment. And in JavaScript, to do a single line comment, you can do slash slash. And you notice in my notepad plus plus, everything will turn green. So that will just ignore it when it gets to the web browser. This is just a way to leave yourself some notes or to comment things out. Um, it's very helpful when you're looking for errors in your code. Uh, you can see I did it down here with the PEMDAS as well. You could also do a big block of stuff. And to do that, you would do slash asterisk. And you can see everything just turned green below it. So when you're done with that, you can put it at the end of the line, or I'll put it right here. It's just the reverse of that, so asterisk slash. So now this right here is a block. And you can see that the comment that was already a comment is still a comment. It doesn't matter, though, if you took those out now, it's still a comment because it falls in between slash asterisk and asterisk slash. So this is a single line comment, and this is a block comment. So I'm going to push that stuff down so we can start to look at um, if statements. So here I have I have um, their name, I ask them their name, and then I use their name. I say, what is your age? Again, you can concatenate their name in here if you want to be really friendly. And also, on a different line, I turn that into a number. So not only can I do math to it, I can also compare it to other numbers. And I can use symbols like less than or greater than. Greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. We don't have those on the keyboard, so you could look up the alt code, but you don't have to use that. What you would do is you would do greater than or equal to. So let me comment that out. Um, this would be greater than or equal to. And then for less than or equal to, it should be less than or equal to. So make sure you don't put a space in between these. This is one command. If you put a space, it's going to think you want to compare two things, and then you want to assign a value. Um, another thing is less than or equal. Um, if we want to compare two numbers to see if they're the same, we can't just say one number equals another number because equals will assign a value. So you're going to say is 7 equal to age. It's going to try to assign age to 7, which you can't do. So to compare two things, you have to use a double equal sign. So again, no space in between there. This is going to give you, all of these are going to give you either a true value or a false. Yes, it is equal or no, it's not. Yes, it is greater than or equal to or no, it's not. Yes, it is less than or no, it's not, or less than or equal to. Uh, and another one that we're going to look at is not equal to. And the not side in most languages is the explanation point. So if you want not equals, you would do not and then equals. And that could come in useful as well. So these are a couple of the commands. Again, you can use just greater than or just less than as well. So let's do an example where we already have their age. So maybe they're buying a ticket to a movie. So we want to say, let's start pretty simple with just a single if statement. Uh, what we can do is we can use the command if. You can see it changes colors. And then we're going to need a condition in here. And that is going to go inside parentheses. So now we need something that evaluates to either true or false. So we have their age because they put it in and we turn it into a number. Um, and we can also hard code a number. So let's start off with just having um, two things. Right? Either they're paying for a student ticket or a child ticket or they're paying full price. So what we can do now is we can say if their age is, let's say, less than or equal to 18, then we want something. So I would just suggest always using these parentheses or these uh, braces in here because um, it's easier to read. And I would also tab over. But technically, if it's only one line of code, you don't need those braces. 
And again, it doesn't read white space. So these tabs in JavaScript are just for the user to look at and make it easier to read. In a language like Python, you would make sure that you had the correct tabbing. So I'm going to add braces, and I'm also going to um, tab over. And all I'm going to do here is I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to say alert. And let's say, um, we'll just put a price in. And we'll say, I don't know, 750. I'm sure prices aren't like this anymore, but we'll just put 750. So if they are less than 18, and we can run this, we can save it. We can refresh it and check. So the more often you run things and make sure it works, the easier it's going to be later. So we're going to say Bob is 17 years old. So you should see 17 is less than or equal to 18. So it will say 750. If I refresh it and run it again, and do Sue this time, and Sue is um, 22, I hit OK, and then nothing happens. So if they are less than or equal to 18, it'll say this. Otherwise, it'll just continue on with the code, and we don't have anything else in the code, so nothing happened. So you could easily add something like if age is greater than 18, right? If you did greater than or equal to 18, then that's already being met in the first one. So two things are going to happen. And then you could say alert. And we'll make a, we'll make these 1225. So now if I ran this, And Sue was 22, now it'll come up with 1225. Should be consistent on a dollar sign here. So you're probably yelling at your monitor, like, what are you doing? You don't need to use that. Because if it's not this, it has to be this. So instead of using if age is 18, because again, you could accidentally put greater than or equal to 18 and two things might happen. Um, also, this might be multiple conditions that is kind of would be confusing to try to flip around. So what you can do is you can say, if it's not this, it's everything else. So you, you use the term else, and you can delete this. I'll just comment it out, but you'll notice that else doesn't have a condition. So we have if it's less than or equal to 18, alert 750, otherwise do 1250 or 1225. And you'll notice on this one, um, either this is going to happen or this will happen. There's no way in code that both can happen because if an if statement is true, it will skip anything that starts with the word else, including the else statement. So if you run that, that will do one or the other. And it has to do something, right? If you have an else statement, it will do exactly one thing. So maybe we want more ages. Maybe we want a student ticket or a child ticket, whatever this one is, an adult ticket, and then maybe uh, another ticket for um, a senior citizen or something. So what we can do is we can add another thing in between here called an else if. And a lot of people... Um, are used to saying if else because you, you usually talk about an if statement and then an else statement. But this is if else. And the way you can remember this is the condition is always next to the word if. So if condition, else, if condition. So what I can do here is I can say if age is less than, um, we'll say 65. So if there's 65, it'll be a senior ticket. And then in my braces, Again, I would always have braces, even though technically it's only one line long. Then you can say alert, and we'll say a normal ticket. We'll say the senior citizen ticket is 1225, and we'll say a normal ticket is $15. So for this one, um, this will say, it'll start at the top. It'll say age is less than 18. If that is true, it will do 750, and then it will skip anything else that starts with else. So even the else if. And then it'll skip else and I'll continue on. If this is false, it'll check the next condition. So it'll say age is less than 65. If that is true, if they're 22, it'll say 15. And then it will skip the else. If both these two are false, then it will do this, which means it's a senior citizen ticket. And it will do 1225. So if you have this, still exactly one thing will happen. Um, and the nice thing about else ifs is you can have one if, you can have one else, but you can have as many else ifs as you want. So you could break that down and you could have another one, um, a ticket for, you know, if it's your, if you're exactly 65, all right, let's just do that. I don't know why it makes, if it makes any sense, but you can say if they're exactly 65, then we can do another price and we'll do a special 
congratulations, you turned 65 this year, Bryce. And you can say alert. And then we'll give it to him for uh, $2.50. That's pretty nice. So again, if this doesn't happen, then we'll look at this one. If one of these does happen, it will skip this one, this one, and this one. And if this doesn't happen, this doesn't happen, and this is false too, if they're all false, it will automatically do this. And you'll notice that I started low and I use less than symbols. Um, you could do it any way you want, but the nice thing about this is um, you don't have to worry about saying something like if age is between 18 and 65, because we know that if this is, if this is true, it doesn't even look at this. So if you get to this spot, you know that they're not less than or equal to 18, so they're at least 19. So that automatically makes it between 19 and 64 in this case. So you can use 100 else ifs if you want. Um, you have to start with an if statement, and the else statement is optional. So if you don't want this one, you don't have to use it. So an if followed by 99 else ifs, at most one thing can happen, but nothing can happen if you don't have the else statement. If you have an else statement in the end, one thing will happen no matter what, because if it doesn't happen, it will automatically happen at the end. And then finally, if you have 100 if statements and they all just started with if, zero, one, two, 50, 100, all of them could happen, none of them could happen or any combination. So the nice thing about connecting them with the word else is that they are dependent on each other. A bunch of if statements on their own will be independent. So you could accidentally, even if you didn't mean to, you could make more than one thing happen. So this is how you use if else statements. And there are a couple other things that um, we'll see as well. And those are multiple conditions. So you can actually use um, something called the or. And the or in JavaScript is two vertical pipes. So that is shift and then backslash above the enter key. And you can also use and. And and in JavaScript is two ampersands, so shift seven. So this can separate two conditions. And if you remember from the first unit, uh, the logic gates, an OR gate means that both thing, one, one of the two things has to be true. And an AND statement means both things have to be true. So you can actually separate these conditions with ANDs and ORs. Um, and then also, if you wanted to flip them around, you can use a NOT. Which is an exclamation point. So you can say not something. So you'll see those throughout the code and in the chapter. Um, but basically, again, we did an if statement. And now we have a condition that opens a brace, but no semicolon there. Instead, it opens a block. And then every command inside, you should have a semicolon. And you can connect them using else if. And then finally, if you want to do everything, you could do if. So again, you wouldn't need that. That was just a comment. And that is all for this video. I will see you next video where we'll look at some loops.